Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N-Word is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay. Brooke Schuyler Richardson was too white to be guilty. Too white to be guilty. Now, this one right here, it went down in the year of 2017 in a place called Carlisle, Ohio. Now, Carlisle, Ohio was one of them white places. Zero black people. None whatsoever. Now, uh, Skylar Richardson, she was 18 years old at the time. And uh, so Skylar, 18 years of age, living in this town, Carlisle, Ohio, she had a fling with a young man by the name of Trey Johnson. So Skylar and Trey Johnson are messing around, doing what they do. They broke up. Trey Johnson goes back to college. After this little fling that they had, Skylar goes to the gynecologist to get birth control pills. When she goes to the gynecologist to get these birth control pills, the gynecologist did some tests on her, told her that she's actually pregnant, okay? So Skylar's pregnant. Now, of course, she's pregnant by this young man who she was just with. Now, the doctors told her that she had around 10 weeks to deliver this baby, okay? So she got this news. She didn't tell anybody. She didn't notify her family, anybody, okay? Her mother did get an email which referred to Skylar being pregnant, but she told her mom that that was a mistake and that's not true, and I, I just started taking birth control pills. So she went over and told her mom that after her mom inquired, okay? Now, 11 days after this visit to this gynecologist, right, she gave birth. She gave birth at three in the morning at her family's house, right in the bathroom. She gave birth to a little girl. She named this little girl Annabelle, which is kind of spooky to me right there. She named this girl Annabelle. Now, Skylar claims that she didn't want a baby, nor did she even know what to do with a baby. So after giving birth to baby Annabelle, Skylar went in the backyard, dug a shallow grave in the yard, her family's yard, buried Annabelle in the shallow grave, and marked the spot with flowers. That's how detached she was to another human being. And Skylar didn't really have a care in the world. Now, after she had this baby and she delivered it, she even sent her mom a text message boasting about how she got her belly back and she's never going to get fat again because, of course, she was pregnant. So she had a little weight gain going on, you know, stomach looking a little puffy, not too big. But so she's happy. Maybe her mother said something to her about it. I think her mother is one of those people who's really into image and weight and things like that and being skinny. So she sends her moms this picture saying, look at me, you know. So what happened was Skylar goes back to the gynecologist. Again, the first time she went, the gynecologist didn't give her any birth control because there was no need to. She said, you're pregnant. So now she goes back to get birth control pills again. And the gynecologist asked her, what happened with the pregnancy? So she broke down and told this gynecologist what happened. I did this, this, and this. Shortly after that, Skylar's taken in from questioning from the police. She's interrogated. And during this interrogation, uh, she said that, yes, yeah, she gave birth to a baby. Uh, she said the baby was stillborn and she panicked. So she buried the baby in the yard. Okay, now people, by the way, they say that this baby was not stillborn. So after this first trip to the police station where she's interrogated, she's released without any charges. They let her go. Um, did, did, you, did you end up burying her at your house? Okay. Was the shovel or whatever you used, was it at your house? Yeah. Okay. Um, so just, just kind of help me, you know, walk through this. So what did you do? I guess, is your bedroom upstairs or bathroom upstairs? Okay, so you had to walk downstairs. I had to clean myself up a little. Are you carrying her? Yes. Um, did you go into the garage or do you have an outdoor shed like yeah, where you have a shovel? Yeah, I the garage. Okay. When, what did you find or what did you use? I found a shovel. I just put a little hole in my backyard and put her in it. Okay, I understand. What did you do? Did, did you have, and you didn't have any help, right? Okay. What did you do with her while you were digging the hole? I sat her down. 
Was she outside with you? Were you um? Were you worried that anybody was gonna see? Yeah, I should have told my mom. She could have asked me. Understand, but I mean, what? Was it daytime? No, it was the middle of the night. Oh, it was the middle of the night. Very, very early. Okay. Did, did it wake you up like you felt like something was. I didn't sleep that night. Oh, you didn't sleep, okay. Did you already feel like something was going on I with her? Know. So, what they did was they sent the forensic pathologist out there to Skylar's yard to look at, uh, to get the remains of some things and look at the dirt, the remains of whatever she did. This forensic pathologist told the police that it looks like somebody tried to burn the baby because the bones are darker than they should be. So because of that, six days after Skylar's first trip to the police station, they called her back. Okay, they called her back to tell her, like, listen, we know that you tried to burn the baby. Okay, but what's kind of interesting is this forensic pathologist later went back and changed their opinion. They contacted another forensic pathologist, and the other one said, no, there's no physical evidence on a baby's body to show that it was burned, okay? So the police kind of left it alone. They kind of left it alone, but she's in there at this time, and she finally told them, yeah, I tried to cremate the baby with a lighter. So not only did she dig a hole, bury a baby, who they said this baby was alive, didn't say anything, she also tried to cremate her baby, okay? So there you have it. There you have it. And I wonder what was up with these forensic pathologists because they had two of them who were actually saying that, nah, this baby was not burned. But the one that was called initially said, yeah, something doesn't look right. The bones look like they were, you know, they're darker than they should be. We think that this was going on. But then they changed it. So she actually admitted it. So who knows? They probably were trying to, fix this thing up for a cover from the beginning. Now, eventually, Skylar also admitted that she believed that the baby was born alive. Okay? She admitted to the police that she believed that this baby was born alive. She said that she might have squeezed too hard and accidentally killed the baby. Okay? So the cat's out the bag. They can't really hide this for her anymore. You know, too many people at the police department knows, the gynecologist knows, the forensic pathologist knows. I actually believe that they would have kept this under the wraps had only the police known or something like that. I really, like if they, maybe it was only one or two officers, I think they would have did that, okay? So now, Skylar Richardson, she has to face charges for what she did. Now, the charges that they're trying to hit her with, murder, manslaughter, gross abuse of a corpse, child endangerment, and tampering with evidence, okay? She's facing life in prison if she's convicted of these charges. So this thing goes to trial. People, at this trial, this, this trial was a bunch of buffoonery, man. I mean, it was obvious that the girl was guilty. But what her defense team did was they flipped this thing. They made it look as if Skylar was a victim here, and they turned this whole trial into a Skylar sympathy show. And it, it, worked, it worked out for her, people. They had all kinds of people showing up, giving irrelevant statements about, you know, from high school about how Skylar would sit at the lunch table with autistic children. You know, they went and got a psychologist who treated her when she was younger. This psychologist comes in and testifies that Skylar had been sexually abused by a boy when she was 12 and she trusted him and looked up to him. And due to this, she has a personality disorder. Uh, she had high school teachers come in. Her defense team had high school teachers come in take the stand and say things that like, uh, oh, Skylar was so meek in high school that people had to defend her from bullies. You know, this girl was a cheerleader, y'all. She was a cheerleader in high school. You know what I'm saying? They had people come in saying Skylar would never be mean to another human being. I've never seen her hurt anybody, all kind of stuff. They even called her little brother named Jackson to the stand, and he testified, Skylar is my best friend, and he recalled how she would sneak him donuts while their parents were not home. Just a whole bunch of stupidity, y'all. You know what I mean? Anything to try to flip this whole situation, a bunch of BS that had nothing to do with the fact of what Skylar did, the action, what she actually did. So, of course, outcome to this trial in this all-white town, Skylar walks. Boom, she's free. This girl had a live baby, buried it in the yard, burned it, calling herself cremated, she keeps it moving. She walks. 
too white for prison. It took the jury three hours to reach this not guilty verdict. The only charge that she was convicted of was gross abuse of a corpse, which in the state of Ohio, she could face a minimum of uh, six months and a maximum of a year for this, okay? But her attorney said that they don't expect her to be sentenced at all, and she won't, okay? Her attorney said that she's done enough time in this small town. So after they read not guilty, of course, Skylar broke down and cried. They led her away in handcuffs. She says to her mom, I love you. Her mom whispered back, we love you too, baby. All this old nonsense, man. I mean, I'm not knocking her parents for trying to defend their child or whatever, but yo, this is crazy, people. This is stuff that we never hear of as black people, like our people actually going through stuff like this. But these type of things in these, these, these white towns, people, they happen every day, man. We just have no idea. You know what I'm saying? We can't relate to this, yo. Absolutely not. We have no idea how it is to go into a courtroom where everybody looks like us. Judge, everybody. Forensic, forensic patho, everybody. You know what I'm saying? And they say, why it always got to be about race? <laughs> this girl, man, this is actually very sinister and demonic. She going to pay for this. She going to pay for this. But anyway, people, why it always got to be about race? Ask the people who created race. Easy.